hear it. Um, so, yeah, Melton was really good before he got hurt. I think, honestly, the only reason that they could get him is because he played 38 games. Yeah, like, If exactly. he played a full season, that's exactly, he probably would have gotten a multi-year offer from somebody. That's exactly what Rich Hoffman said yesterday uh, from PHLY Sports. He also used to work for the Athletic. He's been covering the Sixers for a long time. He said the only reason he got paid what he got paid is because he got hurt. Yeah. He's like, he's a good player. And I remember, you remember when the Warriors played the Grizzlies, that playoff series. Um, very During the com- championship season. Yeah, yeah, very competitive series. Um, but I remember after that season was over and they let Melton go, I was like, you let the wrong guy go. Why you have Dylan Brooks still? I thought Melton was better than Dylan Brooks. I genuinely did. I was like, he's better than Dylan Brooks. They picked the wrong guy. Uh, of course, they ended up scapegoating Brooks. And, and I think they admitted that after moving on from Brooks the year yeah, after. 100%. Melton was making plays that series against the Warriors. And they would take him out. And I'm like, this coach is an idiot. Yeah. Hey, what's his name? Taylor something? Oh, Taylor shoot. Jenkins. Taylor, Taylor Jenkins. Jenkins. Thank yeah, you, Carter. Yeah, Taylor. He, and I don't want to call the man an idiot. That's not fair, but well, it was we've a, all been idiots at times. Yeah, that's a dumb decision, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it that way. That's a dumb decision. Uh, although Taylor rubbed me the wrong way. Remember when he acted like uh, he acted? Who was it? Draymond or, or no? No, it was Pool. He acted that's like right. Pool. Yeah. He acted like Pool. Like tore John Morant's ACL because he like grabbed his knee a little bit and tried to like equate it to Dylan Brooks literally almost like killing Gary Payton the second on yeah. that fast break. Yep. That was Bush League. It's like, dude, those are not comparable. Stop it. You know they're not comparable. You're being disingenuous right now. Yeah. Yeah, so that that whole series was annoying. Everybody over there, Grind City, just annoying. It, it's amazing where those two franchises have gone, including the Warriors, because the Memphis Grizzlies have attached themselves to a player that's kind of become a problem in John Morant. And to bring him back to Melton, I think a big reason they were able to not just sustain his injuries a couple of years ago, but also thrive and win was because you had a couple players like Tyus Jones and DeAnthony Melton that could step in and start and help you still be a 50-win team. So I think he's a winning basketball player. I think the Warriors have not made the splash move that everybody wants, of course, to replace a splash brother, but they've made some under-the-radar, intelligent moves. And I think it's something that right now, Jay, I can en- I can envision them staying at a similar level to last year. Assuming, of course, Draymond doesn't get suspended, which is a big assumption, could make an ass out of you and me. But I also think that they're not done yet. I don't think a big fish is in the pond for them to go get, but I don't think they're done making moves yet. And they got, I don't know, you know, a couple of days, essentially, until the moratorium um, finishes. I would assume they would like to get things done before... USA Olympic basketball kicks off. So Steve Kerr is probably going to be busy. Obviously, Curry is going to be busy. Um, I'm assuming they would like to get things done soon, but I don't think that they're finished yet. 888-957-9570. Yeah, no, I don't, they can't be finished. I mean, if they're finished, that is, that would be disappointing. Now, like I said, top of the hour that, top of the 12 o'clock hour that I believe They've had a pretty good offseason, all things considered right now, playing within the margins. Mike Dunleavy did not have a lot to work with. Uh, he was put in a weird situation, not weird, just unideal is the word, where his boss is telling him, hey, we are penny pinching right now. We're in penny pinching mode. I, for the last two years, I've paid more than anybody in basketball history for two mediocre teams. I will not do that again. I refuse to do it. Can't blame the man. Yeah, good point. Can't blame the man, to be honest. But in terms of what that means to this conversation, it's harder to do your job when your boss is like, dude, you got to be hella efficient. In in a league where everybody is overpaying to get people, you have to you have to pay people what they're worth. That's just it's just it's not like easy. a Fortune 500. Hey, guys, we're going to we're going we're gonna to size things back. We're going to cut down costs. Oh, by the way. We still need the same output this year. Exactly. So I just say that to say from Mike Dunleavy's vantage point, that's not the easiest. He also had to sift through and navigate through the emotions of a dynasty kind of coming coming to an end. Like 
they probably knew they wanted to move off Clay. Like you said about 20 minutes ago, they probably move, wanted to move off Clay and for for a number of reasons. It wasn't just because Clay's numbers have had declined. Clay it's just hard. It's, it was a hard situation. And they probably realized we're we're probably better off without this situation yeah. next year. If we have to have it, it is going to be on our terms. It is not going to be for an overpay. So Don't Levy has to deal with that too. That is a super complex issue. So people have to give Mike some rope. Now that's not to say he he's blame proof and you can't hold him accountable. Trust me. I don't know what Mike Dunleavy's salary is, but that man is making a lot of money. So yes, he will have to answer to his decisions if they ultimately prove to be bad ones, just like he will get praise if they're good ones. I'm just trying to acknowledge the reality that he did not inherit a very ideal situation. No, he, he took over a Ferrari with 200,000 miles. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I mean, like he took over a great car, but you're not really able to drive it too much further. You got to figure out when to hit the gas, when to rev up, when can you really flex going from zero to 60 and 8.3, you know, like that kind of thing he's got to gauge. Why you have a rabid fan base with it's just a the hard highest thing to expectations do. in the world. Exactly, exactly. This is from Anthony Slater of The Athletic. Just a couple more details. Again, they complete a sign-in trade today with Buddy Heald, three years, $21 million. That last year is not fully guaranteed uh, a big part of it, Jay, was the fact that Heald is in Valencia, Spain with the Bahamian team, who is coached by Warriors assistant Chris DeMarco. So there was that connection as well. Also, another detail from this piece is that he had a conversation with Steve Kerr last night, getting on the same page. And also, this might help ingratiate himself with Warriors fans. Uh, apparently, he chose the Warriors over a couple teams, including the Los Angeles Lakers. So... I think they might like to hear that because, again, to your point about Clay, if Clay had gone to the Lakers, I think people would be pretty pissed. And in fact, the the idea that he chose Dallas over the Lakers, I think, also makes people feel better about his exit. It was surprising that he chose Dallas over the Lakers because apparently the Lakers four years, eighty mil, and Dallas is two years. What I know that there is a big difference in terms of state taxes, there but is, I, but I is. can't imagine that he was making significantly less or I mean uh, more like I mean there there is a marginal difference but he would have gotten more in LA right as well as another year another year of guaranteed money you're extremely familiar with Southern California you went to high school in Orange County your dad works for an organization although with someone like Clay I'm not sure if that's a a, a benefit he does he probably he kind of seems like he wants to be away from that type of stuff like oh the family affair you yeah, know why, I mean? why do you leave for college you know you i, I didn't want to stay in the bay area well shoot i wanted to get away from home well i don't <laughs> think clay was highly recruited honestly no he wasn't he wasn't so i don't think clay had a choice i, I actually was watching the pot he was on this wasn't recent but he was on that all all uh all, all the, the smoke, smoke podcast yeah. with um steven jackson and matt barnes and he was saying how he wanted He's like, I want it to be in the Pac-12. That was the conference I grew up watching, obviously, UCLA, uh, USC, et cetera. But Washington State was was the only team. Tony Bennett, who's now the coach of University of Virginia, Warriors just signed a two-way player off of him. Reese Meekman, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's really all he had. But back to the main point, I was just shocked that I th- L.A. seems ideal for him. And I don't you know, the players don't care about the rivalry as much as the fan base. So I don't think he would be like, oh, I can't play for the Lakers and LeBron. Players don't care about that stuff. I mean, like every now and then, yeah, I guess like you'll hear him like, yeah, we don't like them over there. But when it comes down to it, if a team is offering you money, look what Ray Allen did. He said, oh, see you, Boston. I'm going to go right over here to Miami. <laughs> and I mean, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett still hate him for that. Look at what Kevin Durant did. <laughs> Look what Kevin Durant did. The Warriors. Eight years ago today. The Warriors. One of my were favorite days. The Warriors. Now, OKC Golden State is not some traditional historic rivalry, but within the context of that, it was those two teams. Yeah. Like, and he walked right over to Golden State. So my point is players don't care about that as much as much as fans, the the rivalries and all that stuff. And and I don't think they would care as much if the Warriors were able to remain as competitive as they are. How do you see Mike Dunleavy Jr. eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero? 
I, I, I'm with Jason. I think he was handed a really tough hand, perhaps an unwinnable hand, you know, seven, two offsuit. If you're at a blackjack table, he's, he, it's hard to make, you know, w- uh, water into wine at this point, but how is he doing in your eyes? What else can he do at this point? Eight at eight, nine, five, seven, nine, five, seven, zero. Evan Giddings, Jason Dumas with you until four o'clock here on 95, seven, the game. Let's get out to Milbrae and talk to Mark. Mark, happy independence day. What's going on? Are you there? Yeah. What's up, Mark? How you yeah, doing, up, man? Mark? Yeah. What's up, man? I, I got to uh, applaud Dunleavy. I love the job he's doing. He's got a hamstrung salary cap, little flexibility. And I think this Warrior team is already better than, than last year. To me, I think he'll yield is the perfect fit next to Curry. I, I, obviously at times he can jack up shots, but at this point, I think he'll can give you to be a more efficient version of uh, Curry and uh, excuse me, clay and he's younger. So I love this move. You don't have to be tied up with a huge uh, a contract for him long term. I love to pick up a Melton, uh, barring his back injuries. I think he's an excellent player, and I love the the, the pickup of Anderson gives you elite defense. And one of the big time reasons why uh, Minnesota made it to the uh, Western Conference Finals. So as we saw this year, guys from Dallas, everybody gets wrapped up in them big names. But what? How did Dallas get red hot and start rolling when they picked up guys like? Gafford and uh, PJ Washington. So I think it's you need depth and rotation. I don't think working with stars like to me getting Pete Paul George. I don't think it's going to work out that well for Philly because, as you see, you got two injury prone guys who are older, and we know that he doesn't perform well in the playoffs. And you got r- little flexibility when you're paying three guys like Embiid, Maxi, and now Paul George that amount of money. So give me the depth with really good players and who can come in and play right away. And so. I commend him. And as far as Clay goes, I think Clay let his ego and his agents uh, talk him out of it. I think that two year, $48 million contract was more than fair because, guys, let's face it, I love Clay. He's probably a $15 million a year player. And he, in the open market, didn't even get up, get, get as much as a lot of the so called expert thing. So I think he would have been a perfect six man here. But nonetheless, he, I just salute him for not going to the Lakers because everybody assumed there. Because his father works for the team, he grew up there. He he lives in Manhattan Beach in the off season. So everybody, I think this guys something to it that a lot of guys don't like playing with LeBron. Because if you're not in that clutch, uh, that clutch world of his, and it's all about his legacy. If, he, if they don't win, it's gonna you're gonna take the blame for it. So Clay doesn't want any part of that. I think he's gonna play well in Dallas. So overall, guys, the Warriors off season so far has been good. I think they're gonna make one more move. If they get marketing. To me, they're a top five seed in the West. I'll get your thoughts on that. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it, Mark. Great yeah. call. I mean, a lot yeah. of good points he made. Yeah, no, and and you brought this up earlier, the fact that Dallas made a run to the finals from the five seed. Yeah. You know? So it, it is possible. Uh, this is from the 203, kind of interesting. Interesting they got a volume three point shooter from the Bahamas to replace Clay. I, I saw also that. Bahamian. I saw that. Yeah, that's yeah. Kinda, that's clever. Well, they were just together. There was uh, yeah. Eric Gordon, Clay, Buddy, DeAndre Ayton. And then, um, what's his name? What's his name is coaching them? Chris DeMarco. Chris DeMarco, yeah. So I, I haven't been able to get an answer. I, I've reached out to a couple of people within the organization to see if M- Mikey Thompson is still going to be on the coaching staff next mm. year. Haven't been able to get an answer. That's a Steve Kerr question, I was told. And um, I would guess that they don't know. Um, yeah. Because it's a pretty straightforward answer, yes or no. So I, I, I've been... <laughs> I've been uh, I've been on well, standby trying to get the answer, so I would ass- I would assume. They I mean, it kind, of, it kind of aligns with the theme of the off season, which is well, maybe right. Well, no, it, I don't think potentially. It, I don't think it's their decision. I think they I think they would welcome Mikey back with op- open arms. He yeah. didn't do anything to get himself canned or let go. It's just does Mikey want to move on since his brother has moved on? That's that's probably the bigger question. I don't think it would be because. The Warriors don't want him back. No, and and, and not to rehash it, you know, the the, the two for forty eight to me is is a number that's going to live in infamy because he could have taken it. I don't know about you, Jay. I I think the Warriors offered it knowing that Clay was never going to say yes to that. And the other piece that was, I think, a little damning from Sam Amick. There was a couple pieces that came out yesterday. The, the Sam Amick one had an interesting nugget, I thought, which was that Clay Thompson's team had made offers to the Warriors, but the Warriors never made any counter offers 
to Clay's team. So that indicated to me that he wasn't, number one, the priority. I think they would have eventually come around if, if Clay was willing to play hardball. But I think they also knew that he wasn't. Like He just told them straight up that I'm not going to do business the way that you did with Iguodala, with even Curry, and, and with Draymond. So, you know, it, again, it, it's a marriage that I think was destined to come to an end. A matter of when was probably just the question. And look, I I don't think it really needs to be rehashed, but the, the revisionist history about the two for 48 is something that I am kind of over at this point. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean... I understand why Clay, like, I understand the thought process of why Clay wanted to leave. I genuinely do. I'm not sure I would have been in that position because I think I would have been looking at things from a little bit of a different lens. Like, I don't know. It's hard to get into people's head, and it's also hard and probably not a winning formula to tell people how they should feel. Yeah. Like, it's personal feelings for a reason. You know, I don't know all the nuances of everything. I just know that I think if, and I used this example the other day. So if we have some new ears, like I use the example as for, for instance, with the Paul George thing and clay was upset that the warriors did not make him a priority. And the warriors were trying to kick the tires on Paul George first yeah. before like I compared that to like if Kron was like if I had my contract I think I have two more years left on my current contract my current one oh, so you're also aligned with Curry and yeah, Kerr 100% <laughs> when they leave I'm out of here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so um but like if my contract's coming to an end and then all of a sudden say like Stephen A. Smith is like, you know what? I want to do local. I, 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 you know, I'm tired of the grind at ESPN. I would like to retire to San Francisco. I, I'll do Crown. And, and Stephen A. was like, and, and Crown was like, we have a chance to get Stephen A. Smith in, in here. Yeah. What am I going to be offended? You would, Stephen A. All I've done for you, Crown? No. It's Stephen A. Smith. Like you just got. But you if you had been at Crown for 25 years. And you were an OG in the business. So at that point, it would be... Uh, I, I know, it's, I know would, it's, it's hard to imagine, it, but... It would be eight years. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But... They talk about Jay. You're, you're the mate. Like, you you, you're, you you are the reason why Kron became the number one TV station in the market. Like, you helped lead us back to the mountaintop, a place that was unimaginable beforehand. And then they go, oh, yeah, but you, you've done a great job, and here's a paycheck on the way out. Right, right. No, I mean... Like I said, me, I wouldn't have taken it personally. It's, it's, I mean, I would be offended, but like Clay, like Clay did, it would like fuel me to go somewhere else and do even better. And that's exactly what Clay is doing. You know, it is what it is. Like I said, like, yeah. and you said it too. It's kind of tiresome, like trying to get into head of why, whose fault, what he should have done, what they should have done, why he should feel this way, why he shouldn't feel that way. I think. The best way to sum it all up is I do think, I truly do believe this, both sides are better off. Even though that might sound a little cutthroat, both sides are better off. Knowing everything that I know, knowing some of the context, knowing how people feel, just better off probably. And another thing that Steve Kerr probably deep down would agree with, but would never say that publicly. No doubt. No doubt. How are you feeling right now about the offseason? Because I, I don't really want to look backwards too much more. I think everything right now is in the present. It's in front of the Golden State Warriors. How can they get this thing to where it needs to go? What kind of job has Mike Dunleavy Jr. done so far? And what can he do? Does he need to get the big fish? Is there a move around the edges? Is there something else that they can do to trim this thing to get back to the postseason? What is the goal right now? 888-957-9570. A lot of different avenues to go down. We will up until 4 o'clock here on 95.7 The Game. Evan Gettings alongside Jason and Dumas, and also a reminder that the California Classic is coming to Chase Center in 48 hours, starting on July 6th, a summer basketball showcase featuring 2024 NBA draft picks, second-year pros, and more players. So go to warriors.com for your tickets, all brought to you by Clean California. Remember, just one piece of litter can ruin the game. Zero litter is the goal. I see you, Mark. I see you, Eric. I see you, everyone that's on hold right now. 888-957-9570. We'll get to your calls on the other side as we roll on here on 95.7. The- 